What up, Team Quest? How you doing? Welcome to my messy bedroom slash video gaming room and now recording room. Uh, but I have a favorite song, and those of you who know me can probably guess it. But it's called Jesus Freak by uh, DC Talk, and so not I love it not just because of the rap. I like to rap it; it's fun. I know, but I love it because of the meaning behind it. I, I find a lot of value to it, it and it's. Uh, the, the chorus goes, what will people think when they hear that I'm a Jesus freak? What will people do when they find that it's true? And it kind of just talks about, you know, who Jesus was. And also it talks about, you know, uh, someone who's a believer. They believe this, but they have doubts. And they also, you know, they're, they're nervous and, and worried about trying to spread the, you know, spread the good word and talk about Jesus in front of others. And so it, I've been really, this thought process has been on my mind for a while. So I kind of wanted to make a video about it to get you guys thinking about it. But uh, it reminds me of a story. I was a, uh, I was a sophomore in high school when, uh, whenever I really took on, you know, uh, I, I really accepted Jesus and truly, you know, went headfirst into uh, being a Christian. And, uh, I, you know, at this point, I had really first, this is when I really first hit my uh, persecution, like for the first time ever. Like, and so... And honestly, since, I haven't had anybody, you know, I don't want to say attack. This person was not out to kill me or out to get me or nothing. Just more, look, looking back, that this person was more testing me to see who I was, how I'd react to things. And so, um, uh, it was, oh man, oh, this was a fifth period graphic design class, the worst class in the, in the freaking planet. But, uh. You know, at one point he was, you know, he was testing me and stuff, making making fun of me, and the whole time I did pretty good because I I never really got back at him. I ne never really called him names back. You know, I, I I would defend myself, you know, to an extent, but I wouldn't really go overboard like trying to prove myself for nothing. And so I, I feel like I did okay back then, but I feel like now I do way better because I'm way more set in my faith. And so, but at one point something really stuck with me was, uh, he, he was really, you know, he was really getting after me. He kept touching me. I hate being touched whenever I don't want to be touched. Um, and so oh, he was kept like, you know, holding my hand and weird stuff. And so at one point I, I straight up told him to stop. I was really firm with him. I was like, dude, stop touching me. Or I'm going to do something about it. Like I was really direct. And so then he turned around and he goes, that's not what a man of God would say. I'm like, what, what? And so that really had me thinking for a while. And so I'm just going to tell you guys now, man, don't let the world or the others around you define who a man of God is, okay? Jesus, the God in the Bible, defines who a man of God is. Sorry for shaking the whole desk. I just realized what I was doing. But, uh, you know, let let the, the one who is actually, you know, God define what a man of God is. And that's Jesus. I mean, 100%. That's, that's easy. But what I wanted to talk to you guys about is being persecuted in general. And it's just... Whenever it happens to you, it sucks in the moment. I'm going to tell you right now, it sucks. Because then you get all anxious. You want to defend yourself. You're not really sure what to do. And I just want to tell you this. I have a whole bunch of verses pulled up on my computer right here talking about... I'm just going to go ahead and read this one. This is Luke chapter 6, verse 22. It says, Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you or insult you, or reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Basically, you're blessed because somebody perse persecuted you because you believe in Jesus. Like, that's obviously a good thing. But here's the part that's going to make your head do a 360. Two lines under this, because uh, I've got, like, verses talk, talking about persecution pulled up. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 44, it says, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. So that, that should get you thinking, you know? Like, maybe instead of being so focused on trying to defend yourself and defend your faith, Maybe you should be wor more worried about their faith. Because more than likely, the reason they're persecuting you is because they're interested or they don't know what it is or there's something going on in their home life and they see something in you that they don't have and they, they kind of want it, but they don't know how to get there. Man, this generation has been, or th this world has been raised through hate. And so whenever they see something they want or something they want to try to achieve, they hate. That's just what happens. They hate it. And so I want to urge you guys that if you are ever persecuted, you don't have to defend yourself. Or you don't have to prove anything. You, Jesus knows who you are. You don't got to prove nothing to him. And you don't got to prove nothing to them. They don't matter on the eternal scale. But what does matter is their salvation. 
in the eternal scale. <coughs> Coronavirus! No, I'm joking. But, um, so I just want to leave that thought process with you guys and let, let you think about that. And I just want to let you know, man, or people, not man, everybody, that if you persecute a man, that's a good thing. That means you, your faith and your belief is working, and it's true. So that, that's, a, that's a great way to know that. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you for watching. Y'all take it easy, and wash your hands, okay? Thank you. <laughs>